hold on. <laughs> Please wait. I can't even enjoy the music while I wait. Somebody <laughs> Not that one. <laughs> <laughs> BJ went YouTube. Yes? You good? I'm just videoing. You just, just do it. It'll go on YouTube later. Okay. But you're on. I'm on. All right. Facebook. Facebook Live. Hi. Hi, Facebook Live. How are you? Glad you could make it. Glad you're here. Is Roxy there? You know she's there. Is Andy there? Is anybody saying hi yet? All right then. So, announcements. Announcements. Okay, go ahead. Um, Pikes Peak National Cemetery, that is January 15th. That's next Saturday. Reef cleanup. So if you are interested in helping out down there at the Pikes Peak National Cemetery, if you arrive down there to help, please just do not disturb anything other than the wreaths that were laid down for Christmas. Um, frozen Tow Ride, that is January 16th. That's next Sunday. Sunday. That's next Sunday. And that is going to benefit a friend of ours that is in um, need of some financial assistance for a surgery that he's having to have. Um, Nate's having, um, I believe, at, I don't know, somewhere below his knee amputated due to diabetes. So that's going to start out down at the Safeway on 115. Um, actually, it's not, is it 115 there? Is it still Nevada or did it turn into 115 by that point? Anyway, that same way that's down there on South Nevada, 115-ish. Kickstands will be up at 1130-ish. This, oh, it's okay, Mary, keep going. Okay. Um, the indoor swap meet is happening up in Denver, and that's January 29th and 30th. And if you are going to that or planning to go to that, I need to make sure that you've got in your hands um, some of our toy run and blessing of the bikes postcards to hand out up there that weekend. So that is the first indoor swap meet that we've had in two years. It's about dang time. Do you guys realize that we locked this city down the week after the indoor swap meet in March? So the indoor swap meet happened um, in March here in Colorado Springs, and it was the very next week that we shut the world down. So um, that's going to happen at the end of January. And then do we have anything else up there? Yes. So that's the, that's the indoor swap meet that's here in Colorado Springs. And that's March 26th and 27th. That's going to be at the Norris Penrose Center, the indoor center down there. And that's the one that used to happen. Well, it's happened a couple different places here in Colorado Springs, but most recently it was over on Palmer Park and Academy. We will have a booth at this indoor swap meet. If you would like to hang out with us, we hand out Bibles, we hand out toy run flyers, blessing, we invite a ton of people to the blessing of the bikes at that event. We pray with people, um, and we wander around and spend money. Oh, a lot. <laughs> and we eat cookies. Yes, we eat cookies and we hand out cookies. Yes, we do. And um, yeah, so that's always a fun time, a good long weekend. Sometimes they ask me if I'll deliver a Sunday morning message. I don't know if they'll have that there this year or not. But it's nice that that's back. So we will definitely have our booth. I've already reserved it. Um, we don't do a schedule. Um, basically, just want you to come and spend time with us, hang out, and have fun. Is that the last thing that's up there? Yeah? Oh, yeah. Um, ways to give if you're online and you want to do some online giving. PP Bikers Church at Outlook.com. And, um, yeah, cash check, all that jazz. We are excited. Thank you, Beth, for all the work that you've been doing recently to get the postcards ready for the toy run and the blessing of the bikes. I think that we have got all of that information correct and ready to print, so that's kind of exciting. Uh, the board met on Monday night, and we installed a new board member on Monday evening. We would, again, like to just put one more shout out to Roxy for all of her service on the board for the past few years. <clears throat> Absolutely. Thank you, Roxy. And uh, we installed a new board member, Jenny is our newest board member who is not here tonight to receive any thanks, but thank you, Jenny, for joining the board. And the board met Monday night, and we've got big plans for this year, and excited about it. So 
Um, for all of you that are here with us, that have been with us for a long time, we thank you for your continued service to Bikers Church. And we are excited about 2022. Um, I think that is it. Oh, swag. That's not it. I did order more long sleeve shirts. The ones with the red motorcycle on them, I ordered more of those. I ordered more hoodies. Um, there are beanie caps back there on the table that are cool. They are 20 bucks. Um, anytime that you are interested in biker church stuff, let me know um, and I'll hook you up with somebody before or after service. And we will have um, our biker church swag at the indoor saw meet at the booth. If people want to make donations for it that night, is for that those days as well. And now I think I have completed my task. Yes. Yes. All right. So we are beginning a uh, series that will last the next three weeks. Um, and as I've started out some work in the month of February, it is continuing on afterwards. But the next three weeks specifically are entitled Unwrapping Spiritual Gifts. And this is a series that um, God laid on my heart in December, and I am excited to see where he takes us collectively as a church with this. So we are going to be reading tonight. I am in the Christian Standard Bible, and I am in a, the book of Ephesians, chapter 4. Therefore I, the prisoner in the Lord, urge you to live worthy of the calling you have received. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope at your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. Now grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. For it says, when he ascended on high, he took the captives captive, he gave gifts to his people. But what does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower parts of the earth? The one who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens to fill all things. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, equipping the saints for the work of ministry to build up the body of Christ until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of God's Son, growing into maturity with a stature measured by Christ's fullness. Then we will no longer be little children, tossed by the waves and blown around by every wind of teaching, by human cunning with cleverness and the techniques of divinity. But speaking the truth in love, let us grow in every way in the one who is the head, Christ. From him, the whole body, fitted and knit together by every supporting ligament, promotes the growth of the body for building up itself in love by the proper working of each individual part. This is God's word. Father God, now I come before you and I ask tonight, Lord, that minds would be open and spirits would be willing to hear from you, to receive from you. Father, I pray that we would eagerly seek to know more about you and to know more about how we can serve your people with your help and with the gifts that you have in fact given to each and every one of us to create your body here on earth to get the work done. Father, I pray that we would receive from you, that we would bind that to who we are, that we would seek to know more about that, and that we would take it with us out of this place, and that that knowledge would become a part of who we are in you every day of our lives. And Father, I pray that you would increase as I decrease before you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Spiritual gifts. <clears throat> I have a lot of people ask me about spiritual gifts all the time. And they'll say to me, what's my gift? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I wish it was that easy. 
I wish that you could ask me what your spiritual gift is, and I could say, Judy, it's this. Ken, it's that. <clears throat> but I don't know. So in the next few weeks, we're going to talk about spiritual gifts, and along the way, we're going to figure it out. Most of us spend most of our spiritual energy on trying to solve problems. Right? We want to try to fix things. We want to figure it out. And we hope to make some spiritual progress in there somehow, some way. Instead of seeking spiritual progress itself, we run around sometimes trying to put out fires, right? Trying to plug a hole in a spiritual problem. Put someone in charge of something and move on. I call it the warm body syndrome. If I got a warm body over there taking care of that, it's all good. It's not. It's not all good. The true solution comes only when the right spiritual solution shows up at the right spiritual opportunity. And that's where spiritual gifts come into play. And it's what we call spiritual progress when we're able to actually use spiritual solutions. This little church is standing and really, we're not really standing anymore, you guys. This little church is moving in a big direction. We have big opportunities to continue to do big spiritual things. I have been pastoring this church. I founded it in 2007. Um, when I say that, I go, holy Oh, that was a long time ago. And back in 2007, we were tiny. And every move that God has taken us in has been a move in the right direction to serve him. I don't even like to say it's been a move up. I, I don't like those words. It's been the right move at the right time for the right reason for all of those things. And each time that he has moved us, big spiritual stuff has happened. People always ask me around here, because we've grown, I think since we moved here in 2018, and it was 2018, February of 2018, that we moved in here, you guys. Can you believe that we've been here for that? I can't. I'm like, wow, that's a long dang time. Remember the first time you, you were ever up in that balcony? Yes, I do. Um, and people ask me all the time, what can I do? What can I do? How can I help? Where can I serve? Where do you need me? Because people are excited about what they are seeing God do around here. And I'm excited about what God's doing next around here. So, in response to all of that comes this message about unwrapping our spiritual gifts. And I think that it's pretty cool that come, that comes on the heels of Christmas. Because now we're going to unwrap more presents. So, what does the Word of God say about spiritual gifts? What is a spiritual gift? Where do they come from? What gifts do I have? How can I use them effectively? So in our text from tonight, verses 11 and 12 say, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, equipping the saints for the work of ministry to build up the body of Christ. So how can we unleash the power of this church's potential to be all that we can be to reach unity and the knowledge of what God has for us collectively and individually. We certainly don't want to waste efforts, right? Nobody wants to waste effort. 
We don't want to waste energy. We don't want to run around in spiritual circles trying to figure all of this out. And we don't want unused potential to lay dormant, lost, or potentially ignored. So I ask you through this process to be very open-minded with yourself. And don't worry, we're not going to try to have you do something that you're not specifically spiritually gifted to do. We need to employ the right leadership in the right place so that everyone can flourish, so that everyone can be fed, so that everyone can be strengthened in whatever gift it is that they've been given. So I want to answer some um, basic questions tonight about spiritual gifts. What is one? What is a spiritual gift? And on the flip side of that, what is it not? Right? <clears throat> a spiritual gift, you guys, is not necessarily natural talent. And I think a lot of people think I've got natural talent for something, so that must be my spiritual gift. A lot of people think that natural talent thing, I'm good at this, so that must be where God wants to use me. <laughs> uh -uh. No, absolutely not. Um, just because you can play the piano doesn't make it your spiritual gift, right? Because we might have a real good, solid gift that if we were trying to, trying to use that as a spiritual gift to, and it terrifies us to do that, that's not really very smart. And some people can, can sing, right? But just because they're singing doesn't necessarily make it a gifting for them. And that doesn't mean that they shouldn't be up here singing. But there's other ways that God can use that spiritual gift. Just because you can fix things doesn't necessarily make it your spiritual gift. You can fix things all day long, and it can really never touch someone spiritually. Just because you pray a lot doesn't make it your spiritual gift. I pray a lot. It is not one of my spiritual gifts. Don't get me wrong in any way, shape, or form. It could be, right? There are people that are absolutely gifted in music, and it is their spiritual gift. There are people that pray a lot, and it is their spiritual gift. There are people that are craftsmen, and it is their spiritual gift. But a spiritual gift is a God-given ability that enables a believer to effectively serve the body of Christ and reach people spiritually using the gift. Every piece of that definition is important as we go through this study to really understand and grasp the concept of these gifts. Ephesians 4, 7 my eyes are really tired tonight, it says, Now grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. So, spiritual gifts are God-given, spirit-directed. You receive them. You don't earn it, you don't apply for it, and you don't get it because you want it. Amen. It is given to you according to his measure. So there are people that are going to want to be gifted in prayer, and they're not. There are going to be people that are that want to be gifted in music, and they're not. There are going to be people that want to be gifted in leadership or discipleship or apostleship, but they're not. They are given to you to serve the body of Christ. They're not given to you for you to receive edification in them. And that is a tough thing also because a lot of people want recognition for their spiritual gifts. Your spiritual gifts may never receive outward recognition. That's not why they were given to you. This is also why they are not your talents, your God-given talents. Because very often, people use their talents for self-glorification. 
and your spiritual gifts are not about that. They are also only given to believers. They are received when you receive Christ. Your talents you are born with. Your spiritual gifts are given to you to serve him when you receive him. In Galatians chapter 5, there is a list of character traits. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The law is not against such things. A spiritual gift is not the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit, these nine character qualities that are listed in Galatians, those character qualities are given to everyone. So when you look at the fruit of the Spirit, everyone has the fruit of the Spirit. Those are not spiritual gifts. Those are things that we should manifest in our lives. All of us. All of us should have love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Every one of us. And as we develop the fruits of the Spirit, the fruits of the Spirit are used when we're using our giftings. A spiritual gift is not a ministry role. It might be, but it's not necessarily. You might be in youth ministry or music ministry or urban ministry, and these are ministries in which you use your spiritual gifts. So the actual role of ministry is not your spiritual gift. Teaching, evangelism, service, administration, these are spiritual gifts. So you may be involved in urban ministry as a servant. You may serve breakfast every Saturday morning in urban ministry, but urban ministry is not your spiritual gift. Your spiritual gift might be service. You might be the administrator or the creator of something in evangelism. But evangelism itself is not your spiritual gift. It is the act of administration that is your spiritual gift. There's a difference between those things, and yet they go absolutely together. To discover your spiritual gift and then use it effectively is the best way to serve <coughs> our church. And that is why God has taken us here. We all need to know what is my spiritual gift so that as this church grows and moves, we've got the right people in the right place to touch the right people in the right spiritual way at the right time. <clears throat> Ineffective service is usually due to someone deciding what their gift is. If you are not an evangelist, you should not be evangelizing. Right? And there are, you guys, there are a lot of people that want to be an evangelist. And you can just watch them evangelize and go, this is so not where you belong. <laughs> right? There are people, and I am, I am one of them, I am not, my, I am not gifted in hospitality. I'm just not. I'm not in any way, shape, or form. And if you stick me in a hospitality role, you will watch me flounder. Because I am not good at it. I'm just, I, it's not where I belong. I know my spiritual gifts. I've done assessments. And I know where they are. And I know where they're not. <laughs> Absolutely. Does every believer have a spiritual gift. Absolutely. Most people will discover that they have more than one. And there are a few places, and we're going to spend time in the next few weeks in these few places of Scripture that really talk about spiritual gifts. First is Ephesians. Second is Romans 12, 6. 
We have different gifts according to the grace that has been given to us. So again, the grace that has been given to you has been given to you, not to someone else. 1 Corinthians 12, 7, Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. So again, your spiritual gift is given to you, not for you to hold on to it, but for you to use it amongst the believers for a common good. Prayer warriors, man, we need them. Man, we need them. We have needed an active prayer ministry in this church for years. We have needed people to be fielding emails and sending prayers out. And, and we're going to find the people that are gifted in prayer through this series. And we're going to put them to work for the common good of the body. Ephesians 4, 7, again, to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it, as he appointed it, as he gave it. He knows exactly where you're supposed to be, exactly how you're supposed to be feeding each other. We are the hands and the feet and the eyes and the ears and the mouth. We are everything. But I will never ask you to do something that you are not gifted at. I do not want to watch you struggle. I want you to know exactly where you belong and exactly how to use that gift. I have found some, I found many assessments. And in the third week of this series, so not next week, but the week after that, I'm going to distribute those assessments for you guys to work through. And there are approximately 19 to 21 different giftings that the assessment will point out. And I took the assessment that we're using and it nailed my spiritual gifts exactly the way that I tested for them about 10 years ago. And so I have a lot of faith in the assessment itself. Um, and then along the way, we're going to form some teams. And I don't like the word committee at all. Um, I think that we function really well in teams. And we're going to form some teams that are then going to be able to use those giftings for the common good of the church and for our service. As you guys saw, you know, and we talked about in the announcements, we have the indoor swap meet coming up in March. We have the Blessing of the Bikes coming up in June. We have the Toy Run every October. And then we get into other things along the way. We get into the Easter, Easter season and Christmas and, and all of those things. And along the way, we need to be able to know exactly who is gifted where to handle what so that we can reach people with the love of Jesus. There are people that absolutely do not belong in front of the table at the swap meet. <laughs> and there are people that absolutely belong at the front of the table. And that might be scared to death to be at the front of the table. But that might be their gifting. And they just don't know quite how to use it yet. Spiritual gifts are God's grace on you. When you, when he, you know, he chases after us, doesn't he? He chases after us. And he knows. When we receive him, he knows exactly what he wants to do with us. He knows exactly who we're supposed to touch. He knows exactly who we're supposed to reach. He knows exactly how we're supposed to do it but we don't. And for people that are naturally shy, they hear about stuff like this, and I want no part of that. I'm not gonna be here for the next three weeks. I have just figured out where I'm not supposed to be. I, again, never in a million years am I gonna call you out to do something you're not supposed to do. God knows. Christ knows. And the Holy Spirit, our helper, 
our encourager, our supporter, our teacher. He knows how to fan that flame inside of you for that gift. We all have spiritual gifts. And it's very, very likely that you have two or three or four. Some of you might have eight. But we all need to figure out where they are. As the board met Monday night and we talked about the church and our mission and our direction and, and what God is potentially doing with us, we landed in a place where we know that we need a lot of prayer covering what God is what God is doing in this body. So what I really want to ask all of you to do, whether you're gifted in the middle, I want you all to pray for this church. Pray for this body of believers. Pray for this building. Pray for what God is doing here. Pray for the people that haven't come yet that are coming. Pray that we know where our spiritual gifts are so that when those people arrive in this place, they are greeted with the right person, encouraged by the right person, served by the right person, taught by the right person, administrated by the right person, and every other thing that we need together because as God's word says in this and I will close with this we will no longer be little children tossed by the waves and blown around by every wind of teaching by human cunning with cleverness and the techniques of deceit we are no longer going to be little children tossed around and unsure of what we're supposed to be doing but we will speak the truth in love let us grow in every way into him who is the head of Christ. We are going to grow in him together. Because from him the whole body fitted and knit together by every supporting ligament promotes the growth of the body for building up itself in love by the proper working of each individual part. We are going to seek the proper working of each and every part of this body. Because we are absolutely held together by each other. Not one of us can do this by ourselves. Not one of us. And we're not going to try. We are an amazing team. And the years have shown it. The things that God has brought to us, that toy run, holy cow. That's a ton of work, and we get it done, but we can get it done better. And the blessing of the bikes is great, and we get it done, but we can get it done better. And the swap meet is great, and it's a lot of fun, but we can get it done better. We can get Saturday nights done better. We can get things during the week done better. We don't do anything during the week. But we should be, and we can be, and we will be, as we figure out who is supposed to be where, doing what for the edification and the growth of this body. So I hope that you are not in any way, shape, or form nervous about the next few weeks. I hope that you are excited about the next few weeks because I am seriously excited about what God is doing here at Bikers Church. And I'm excited to see where all of you fit into that puzzle. Amen? Amen. Amen? Okay, mark your calendars. Make sure you're here. Don't go run and hide because if you do, I will come find you. I know where most of you live. Anyway, we'll keep going. Amen? Amen. Amen. Father God, I thank you for the opportunity that we have to seek you more. And Lord, in seeking you more, I am excited for us seeking ourselves more. Finding out who we are. After all, most of the time we are seriously wondering, what am I doing here? What's the point? Where do I belong? And how do I do it? Father, I know that you have big plans.
plans for us to grow in you. And I know that you have big plans for us to know what you want from us, where you want us to be, how we can build each other up, how we can support each other, how we can grow, how we can work together to cause your church to flourish. Father, I pray that you would encourage us daily to pray for each other and to pray for this church. To pray for the work that you have for our hands. And Father, I pray that once more, minds will be open and spirits will be willing to receive from you the knowledge of each and every gift that is in the body of Christ. Thank you for our opportunity to see you.